If we're going to talk about tramming the mill, what does that actually mean? It's a process of setting the center line of the spindle exactly perpendicular to the bed in both the y-axis and also the x-axis. So why do we care about tram? Well, imagine trying to surface this piece of metal completely flat. If this is our cutter, imagine if this was going across perfectly in tram, it'll cut a perfectly flat surface. But super exaggerated, if the cutter was offset at a big angle and went across, all it would do would be to carve like a U-shaped trench into the metal. And the bigger the cutter, the more exaggerated that error is. Since we aren't trying to create trenches, we need our mill and tram. The way I normally check tram on my mill was to unscrew the column from my magnetic indicator and mount a clock, put it up in a collet, and then swing that around looking for deviations across the table. Mail time. Now I got contacted by Luke in Malta because he had found a couple of parts that he wanted to give me. So we got chatting and, well, this is like Christmas. So what do you think's in this one? Oh wow. See Luke said he had a couple of uh, Morse taper drills for me. This is a real collection. Well, this one's even brand new. Size 12.5. Call it a half inch. I will make a new container. For my drill drawer. This more. Hey Luke, did you regrind all of these as well before you sent them to me? Thanks a lot. What's going to be hidden under the next layer? All right, Luke said he had a D3 cam lock chuck adapter, which is fantastic. Brilliant, mate. Oh, and a couple more drills. Oh, this one's carbide. I'll destroy that pretty quick. I'm pretty good at killing carbide drills. Nice little Morse adapter. And yeah, these are the cam lock studs. Yeah, that's great, because I was going to get a three jaw chuck for the shore blend. Yeah, 125 millimeter, that's the size I was looking for too. Now when I was chatting with Luke, he said he'd picked up a box of used clocks and there was like 50 of them. And he didn't really know what to do with them all. So he gave me this match pair of 100 millimeter clocks. So I'll need to make up some sort of holder to dial in parts on the lathe. The discussion of clocks with Luke started with Mitutoya with a broken bezel. He was going to look and see if he had a replacement bezel for me. Aha! And there it is. A replacement bezel with only slightly damaged glass instead of the completely smashed one I had before. And then we got to brainstorming about what you can do with a whole box of clocks. I'll need to 3D print up a battery holder for this one. There's another nice one. Oh wow, this one's enormous and measures in microns. As we get older and the eyes get crappier, this gets used more and more, I'm sure. Now, I know, this is getting kind of crazy. Here we have a shaft. Now, I already know what this is because Luke sent me photos. And this is amazing. While we were talking about designs for uses for clocks, he just whipped out to his garage and very quickly manufactured this. That's wild. Nicely engraved. Luke, that is, in, that is incredible, mate. I'm just blown away. So Luke also machined up these lovely little split clamps. I'm assuming they go in the hole here and retain the clock. 
He also managed to find a few tips in his box. Thanks. Now I was laid out with a cold this week. I didn't get down to the basement at all and I wasn't sure what my video this weekend was gonna be, but Luke, you saved me, mate. Thanks for your generosity and thanks for the idea and especially thanks for this incredibly beautiful tool. Now I already had a couple of clocks, but now I've probably got more clocks than I'll ever need. Right, let's tram the maho. Before I start that, I'll just make sure there are no burrs. I'll just put the gearbox into neutral and just position it. I'm going to tram the X direction first because it's the easiest in that I can just loosen the head swivel bolts and nudge the head around to straighten up that axis. I'll set the clocks facing straight outwards so that they're never facing to the back and hard to read. I can just walk around the machine to read them. Okay, so it's the first one zeroed. Looks like the pointer's jammed. I can't move that independently of the bezel. I got the clocks pretty well lined up for this one. I can't move the marker on this one either. Now to check the tram, we just rotate it through 180. Just lift the pointers up. Okay, that means this side is about five one hundredths low. The other side should be then high, which it is. Right, let's adjust that head. Now I need to bump this around until this reads zero. It's not moving at all. Did I get all the bolts? One, two, aha, that would explain it. There's a fifth bolt right at the bottom, which I didn't get. So now I should be able to tappity tap tap. Well, with a rubber mallet, it's more of a thud, thud, thud. Zero. And zero. All right. So we're now trammed side to side, which is the easy part. Now I need to tram it front to back. And for that I'll readjust the clocks so they face the same way. Hey cool, Luke actually found a 3D model for the cover on GrabCAD, so a bit of print one. Well, let's check that out. It works. I think I need to reprint that on a finer printer, but definitely works. Cool. That's very nice. That's very helpful. Right, back to the x-axis. Now, since both of those clocks have already been zeroed out onto a level plane, I should be able to just turn them and read off the error. Okay, that means the table is tilting forward. Now I'll just rotate that round to the other side and cross check that reading. Yep, same reading. So four plus four, we've got about an eight one hundredth tilt forward. 
Now there's no real adjustment for that. The table is just bolted on with four bolts. I guess I could take the table off and clean the surface and make sure I don't have a bit of swarf sitting up near the top or something. If it is like that, the other option is to shim. I guess the correct way is to pull the table and scrape it to bring the mounting surface back per perpendicular to the table. Do any of you have a good recommendation for tramming out a saggy table on a console style milling machine where this is all just fixed and bolted? If you do, please let me know in the comments section. Thanks. I'm off to New Zealand in February, so my video schedule is going to be all over the place. I do have a few ideas of things I'm going to upload though. But for now, a huge thank you to Luke for making this amazing tool. Thanks to my Patreons and members, and thanks to you all for watching. See you later.